Hey everyone. Okay, we need to have a talk. There are a few loose ends that I have um, left unaddressed, which I actually should have taken care of. Uh, and a, a, few, a few things I want to get out of the way. First of all, when we started the game, I didn't uh, go through this... Um, let me show you right now. When you start a new here, when this game, it shows you each of the three character types. And I want to show you the three animations, which we didn't see because I imported a character. So let's let's start a new hero and watch this. There you go. Those are the three little animations that the game uses to introduce the three uh, the three character types. Um, and I, I neglected to mention I probably should have um, the stats in this game can go up to two hundred. Remember, in the first game they could go up to one hundred. In this game, uh, you can turn any of these up to uh, so you can you can actually start off because uh, you have fifty points available if you're starting a new character. So you can start any of these off, or well, not any of these, but some of these you can start off above a hundred. And as you're playing the game with our with our imported character, our stats started at 100 for a lot of these things, but they can go up to 200 in this game. Basically, in general, <clears throat> um, the maximum of any stat in the Quest for Glory series is the number of the game times 100. So in other words, the first game lets all these go up to 100. In this game, the second game, they can go up to 200. In the third game, uh, Wages of War, they can go up to 300. Fourth game, Shadows of Darkness, they can go up to 400. And I think probably it holds true for the fifth game, Dragonfire. I'm actually not sure. I'm not that familiar with Quest for Glory 5. I don't know if they can go up to 500. I think they can, but don't quote me on that because I haven't, I haven't actually played the fifth game. Uh, what else? And by the way, before anybody asks, I don't think I'm going to be doing Quest for Glories 3 or 4. Sorry, I'm not, uh, I'm not let's playing those games. Just because um, they... Mainly, I guess, just because they use the icon-based interface, and I really hate that. I, I really don't like having to point and click, especially in a game like this. I mean, in a regular adventure game, it's bad enough, but in a role-playing game like this, you know, you have to pull out your mouse cursor and go to the top and then say, rest 10 minutes, as opposed to just typing rest. It's it's It just really irks me. Um, maybe I'll change my mind later, but for now, I don't think I'm going to, so... Okay, so there you go. So that's the stats cheat. Stats go up to 200 in this game. What else? What else? I guess I just... Um, oh, I want to apologize also for my blundering around with the um, with the streets, the maze that's formed by the streets. What I was doing when I had the... Uh, when I was doing those uh, last couple of videos, I actually had the hint book, the actual official hint book that they used to sell. Sierra used to sell hint books for most of their adventures. I actually have that with me, and I was looking at the map in the back of that. It turns out the maps in the hint book are wrong. There are actually a few glitches in the hint book's maps that uh, threw me off. It's kind of sorry when the clue book that's sold separately for the game is less accurate than the information they can get in the game itself. The in-game map, once you buy the map from Alechika, his map is actually quite accurate. It's actually better than the one in the hint book, which is kind of silly to me. Well, what's the point of having the book of it? Anyway, I don't want to carp about it too much, because the hint book has other useful information, but the map is just garbage. Don't rely on the map, because it has some uh, some wrong information. And finally, uh, yeah, a couple of my loyal viewers did uh, point out a few things to me that I missed. So let me just... Uh, get out of this screen, and I'm going to restore, uh, let's see, let me restore at the money changer. First of all, I, I didn't want to do this just because, yeah, I thought maybe somebody might, uh, I don't know, you know, it's supposed to be a family game, and maybe it's, a, well, I don't know if it's a family let's play, but anyway, when you're here with Denarasad, the uh, the attractive woman, uh, you, you can, uh, as her crabbiness did point out to me, yes, you can uh, sort of ogle her a little bit, and look at her uh, cleavage, uh, except the game doesn't understand that word, so how explicit do I need to be? Uh, can I look at breasts? Nice! That's all it says. Nice! Very nice! How much you cost? The game doesn't understand much. That, that's worthless. Okay, so there you go. I hope that uh, you have been saucified by this uh, this show of depravity. And yes, Crowley9, another of my uh, loyal viewers, did point out to me, I forgot 
please forgive me. I forgot to bargain for the map and the compass. Um, let me see. Can I go back and... You know, I'm going to go back and just show you how it works. Basically, uh, I guess Shapir is a you know, is a city in one of those parts of the world where you don't just buy things. You know, if you live in North America, you're used to the concept of you go into a store and there's a price on a shelf, and whatever the price is, that's what you pay for the item. But in some parts of the world, haggling is just a part of life. You go to a store and you pick up something off the shelf and you want to, uh, you know, bargain with the, uh, the shopkeeper or whatever about the price. That is impacted by your communication skill. Remember I was talking about this communication skill, which starts off at 91, which is really good, or pretty good. Um, your communication skill affects how well you can bargain. So when I neglected to um, bargain with Alichika from Map and My Compass, I basically got cheated out of a whole dinar. Because remember, we paid one dinar for the map and another dinar for the compass. But if you bargain for them, he'll drop his price to 50 centimus, which is half. So I wasted a whole dinar by just buying those items outright instead of bargaining for them. And just uh, real quick, since I have some time, I'm just going to exchange all my money while I'm here and find my way back to Alichika, just so you can show, just so I can show you what it's like to uh, bargain with him. And since I don't have the map again, I'm going to have to uh, navigate out using. Uh, Hopefully now I have a correct map this time, so I won't get lost again. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to keep going. And keep going this way, and then I'll go this way. Okay. I think now I finally know where I'm going because... Uh, now I have a hopefully correct map of the game. Yeah, these guys are trying to sell me food. You can bargain with, I think, just about all the merchants in those plazas. So, you know, it's just, it's a cultural thing. It's one of those cultures where bargaining is uh, is just part of life. Okay, and he's selling us his cent keychain with the centi, and we already saw that message before. But Okay, so here we go. We're at Alichika, and we can say, bargain for map. All right, you drive a hard bargain. I give for you this, you give me 50 centimes. Let me see if I got one. Okay. Other than that, here you go, boss. One map for 50 centimes. You pay for the map and put it away. Yeah, guaranteed the best in town or you don't get your money back. And the same thing for the compass. I can bargain for compass. And same thing. I drive a hard bargain. He'll give me it for 50 centimes. He sees if he's got one. One compass for 50 centimes. Here you go, boss. That's it. Okay. So, and yes, I did forget to bargain. So I wasted a whole denaro on a lichico. But he's worth it. I mean, you know, he's, his, his accent is so magnificent, I think I consider it a tip. I tipped him a dinar because it, I just love his accent so much. He's, he's magnificent. Belli, belli, magnifico, uh, or whatever. Okay, that's enough of that. So, um, is there anything else that I wanted to wrap up? I think that's it. So, no gameplay progress for this video. Sorry, folks, I just wanted to uh, address a few things that um, that had come up. So I will continue playing Quest for Glory 2 Trial by Fire in the um, in the next video. Oh, one other thing I also forgot to do, and I'm very regretful of this. Because we have thief skills, we can get a thief job from uh, from Dinadazad, the money changer. I forgot to make the thief sign. I can't believe uh, it's just such a stupid thing. Remember, when you meet a fellow thief, you're supposed to identify yourself as a thief by making the thief sign. We learned that in the first game, and I, I knew that for very well because I've played this game before, and I just somehow forgot, so... I'll have to go back to her and make the thief sign later in the day. Luckily, she's open fairly late at night, so I can explore the town during the day, and probably when night falls, I can go back and visit her and make the thief sign. So, sorry, folks, forgot to do that. I will uh, do that later. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you for watching. I hope that I have uh, appeased your uh, desire for, uh, for ogling the money changer and for being cheap and saving a whole dinar on your map and compass. Even though I didn't, I'm not going to save my game here. I'm just going to continue the saved game where I where I lost a dinar, but oh well. Okay. Take care, everyone. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.